please welcome a Tam fan favorite, Karama, back to the show. First of all, you know you're one of my favorite people. You know I love you as well. And um, on this show, sometimes, obviously, we just talk to Heidi and Trey the Truth, these big ways that you Mm -hmm. can save people. But sometimes you can save somebody with a smile. Listen, people forget how important these small things are in someone's day. Sometimes you start going through and you're expecting this big moment like that is beautiful, yeah. but sometimes just someone when you're feeling down saying, it's gonna be all right, giving you a smile, giving you a little high five across the room. Right. Try that today, because it encourages someone and lifts them up. And that's what you do. Whenever I, I came out with my book, one of the first people, and I was really insecure, I'm like, I'm writing a novel, what if the <laughs> reviews are bad? And you were one of the first people to say, you know what, go. I'm, you know, and that was, that felt great even for me. And, with a show, it yeah. felt great to have somebody root for you. Well, I constantly root for you, and I'm already in chapter four. I just got the book. <laughs> um, so if y'all didn't pick it up, it's so good already. I'm an avid reader. I don't get book recommendations unless <laughs> it's good. But the reason is because I think so often we forget to really just appreciate those people around us, and especially those are the strongest mm. or that we think are the most successful. Mm. I come from a household. I'm the youngest of sisters. I was raised by a single mother. And what I realized is that everyone would walk around and be, oh, my sisters are so strong. Strong. My mother's so strong. And I would sit there in the house as a young child looking at all the things they were enduring from bills, bosses, to people in the world trying to tear them down. Yet no one was saying, let me just build you up a little bit. Let me yeah. congratulate you because they assumed they were already so strong. So in these moments like your book, we know you're successful. We know you're amazing. But it's always nice to hear, listen, you, we got your back. It's going to be okay. And that's what we do, you know, that's why I tell people all the time, you know, in marriage and friendships and relationships, we're hopefully training ourselves on how we speak to our children, Mm -hmm. but how do we speak to our friends and our spouses and how we speak to ourselves? And that's a big message you have about say, sometimes being your own superhero. It's, it's so important for you to be your own superhero before you can save anyone else. We've heard that a million yeah. times. You get on a plane, they like, get, get yourself first before you get your children. You know, it's not anything that we don't know. But the problem is that we forget it. And then that we practice negative self-esteem every morning. And I promise you, everyone in here can relate to this. You wake up in the morning time, and the first thing you do when you go in your mirror, you start saying, oh, this don't fit right. Oh, look at my hair. Oh, I'm not cute enough. Oh, something. We tear ourselves down before we even walk into the world. And so I every day practice my self-esteem in the mirror. So I will go in the mirror and if I'm not feeling good about myself, I will find one thing on me that's cute. (laughs) I promise you, one thing. Like this morning it was my eyebrow because I wasn't feeling cute because I'm in New York and I'm from LA so I don't have my normal routine. And I was like, you know, this eyebrow is giving it today. Like I am. And I have been focusing all day on this positive piece of myself instead of repeating the negativity to myself. And I think it's important that we do that because the more you build yourself up, the more you feel that supercharged. You feel like you can go in the world and conquer because you're not tearing yourself down. I love that because a lot of times, you know, people, particularly when you're a parent, you can look at all the wrong things you're doing versus, wait a minute, I went to work today, I did this, and I cooked you all dinner, whether it was good or not. I pulled that off, you know? And I I tell people because they're like, how do you juggle? And I'm like, I don't. Some days I'm in a corner crying, but then there are days I'm like, I tore that blue apron down. And you have to pat yourself on the back. Yeah. And that is a form of saving yourself. It is. It is. Because we are told that gratitude and love should be external. That's mm. the way we're taught. Like, think about it. On Valentine's Day in elementary school, it was all about who you can give a Valentine's Day to. And if you didn't get one yourself, you were immediately disappointed yeah. because you felt no one loved you. And so when my children were in school, I used to say, listen, if nobody give you a Valentine, you promise you, buy one for yourself. Here's a dollar for yourself, a little candy cane. Mm. And I think we have to practice that into adulthood because when you can save yourself by saying, I love me, and it's a hard practice because, Lord, we know. You know, I know, everyone in here knows, the world will tear you down yeah. and try to make you believe you don't deserve love, that you don't deserve the greatness that you were put on this earth to get. And I'm here to tell you, you deserve it. And if you're not getting it from someone else, get it from yourself. From reality TV, MTV, to this, what made you want to go, go into acting? 
Well, it was something I always wanted to try, but um, I had a lot of people in my life telling me, uh, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Like, you already got... First of all, when I left social services to work in TV, people were like, are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Like, everybody got something to say. You ever noticed that? <laughs> um, and so I was just like, I was like over it. And I was like, this is something I want to try. Why am I limiting myself yeah. in my life? I can go after whatever I want. Like, if tomorrow you want to switch a job, go after it. You know, you plan, do what you gotta do, and you ask for help. And so I did that with acting. I quietly and secretly started to take classes during the pandemic because I said I wanna do this properly. And I started auditioning. And then as I started auditioning and I booked the first job, I told people and they were like, really, you doing it? And I was like, too late, I already booked something. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't even wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. So you join the fourth and final scene of Netflix's hit show, Dear White People. Yes. You play a student advisor at an Ivy League university. We have a clip. <laughs> If you do well, Harvard Medical is well within your reach. Pathobiology didn't ruin anything? You talking about the A minus? Oh. You kidding me, right? <laughs> you brought the class average up to a, a D plus. Oh. Yeah, I gotta get a lot more people to sign up for psych this year. Yeah, well, I was thinking of adding something. Joelle, you are familiar with the ancient art of sleeping. Yes, but I guess I just wish there was something on my schedule worth waking up for. Listen. You're no good to anyone else, especially yourself, if you're burnt out. If you have to add something, go ahead and add something that's fun. I mean, you are so good at this. Such a natural and stunning that you delayed it. I heard that you keep like a, I don't know if it's a vision board, but like a list, a binder of things you want to accomplish. Yeah, I do, and I constantly update it. I think. One of the most important things we have to do for our lives is that we have to put our dreams from our mind and put them out in the world on paper, tell them to people you trust. Because the thing is, sometimes when we allow our dreams to stay in our minds, they start to get festered by people's negativity. Yeah. We start to let others, our bank account not being as where we want it to be, make us think that our dreams couldn't be possible. Mm. We let our auntie or our mama who, who said, no, 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 you can't do that, start to fester our dreams. So I put it in front of me so that way every day I can say, this is something I can do. Right. I make my dreams a part of my to-do list. And one of your dreams was to go into the skincare beauty world, which seems natural. Okay. <laughs> and you have this amazing line. Yeah. Um, well, I, when I started balding about a couple years ago, and it was a torch, I'm talking about I was trying to find wigs, weaves. <laughs> I, there was a point in, and this is no lie, season one and two of Queer Eye, I was drawing on my hairline with an eyeliner pencil. Okay, it was that's a, mess, a confession I was not expecting. It was a so mess. So you, you're saying you were a mess, you were drawing in the hairline. Drawing line. it on. Every time Time we hit a bump, my head was on the roof. <laughs> and everybody'd be like, oh, Karamo sat here. And it was just because I could not embrace balding. It was so hard. And then I was like, well, why am I, why can't I embrace something that's natural? Yeah. That happens to me, that happens to so many people around oh this world. God. Why can't I embrace it? And so I started a skincare line because I couldn't find anything out there for people who are bald or balding. And men and women, we bald, we know we, it's okay if you wanna try to do what you wanna do to cover it up, but if you're on that journey of embracing and loving yourself and saying, I'm okay with me, I couldn't find something that helps. So I said, let me start it. And oh, wow. I spent two years. Oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> listen. listen. I see my bald brothers out here, hey! Uh -huh. That is a first for a Tamron Hall show. You shouting out from the audience. That is the first. And because you did the shout out, we have even better news. Guess what? Lucky audience that you are. You're all going home with Karamo's Mantle Skin Care For free. Listen. <laughs> there you go. We got you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now. Do not come to this audience shouting out like that, man, thinking you're going to get free gifts. But this time it worked, sir. Karamo, thank you so much. Thank you. Much.